The uh, universal computational group, that's numerical correspondence with Turing system of logics on the ordinals, and so on. And it can be identified not only with physical entries and information metric, but with the, and therefore the second law of the act, but with also the least action, as we mentioned earlier. It suggests that the physical cosmos and everything else uh, uh, are what Turing called oracles in addition to being information processing system. So perhaps in nature the institution do go beyond Turing's computable number. If such natural law possibilities exist, then it's obvious that living systems will, will exploit them for evolutionary advantage. And so explaining why the intelligent conscious brain or mind, whether they're separate or the same, um, is so different architecturally from children machinery. Okay, I'll leave that. And that's that's basically the end of okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Taking what you said, we're, as it were, contemplating something superior but including the Turing machine, and taking uh, Charles's notion that now we're going to develop tools which help the brain, right? That's where we're going. In the idea of, of computing machines with that, or those two things, yeah. using the word alphabet in the way you use it, yeah. is it the case that these language levels, which have been emerging in computing. Yes. Peter and Charles and I share that we worked on computers prior to 1960 sort of thing. Are, do you think these higher level languages are just uh, examples of the alphabet being expanded? I think that sounds a reasonable uh, possibility. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, go further than that. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't say they were absolutely uh, uh, crucial. Um, if you look at almost all of the literature um, we were uh, talking about Donald Head, he didn't use the word languages, um, he used um, a root sort of thing, right? right? Yeah. Neural um, emotions. Yes. Uh, almost everybody has come up with variations of those words. Um, even to uh, uh, Dawkins using the knee, not this is extreme. Just for fun, I started making a list of them recently. And I've come up with about 20 different uh, definitions of various people working in all sorts of different fields have come up with to describe what you and I would call somebody the programming languages. Um, and they are meaning them from all sorts of different points of view. The two things that struck me as interesting was it came from exactly the same problems, they have the same solutions. None of them made reference to the other people. <laughs> so uh, they've all come from different angles. And, and I love what I view when I see this because so few people pick up ideas from other fields. Um,
Only the civil service tried to do that, and that's why they're against All the national service. Yes. <laughs> but, so I, I would thought that you're, you're putting the finger on an absolutely key point. Um, uh, I did wonder in them, uh, whether using the word alphabet um, helps understanding that, right? I can see why you use it. A um, terrible problem is so that somehow is the word alphabet a little bit limiting? Well, it's, it's alphabets and alphabets and alphabets. It, it's, it's language is rather well, than well, alphabets. I, I apologize if I'm. It's, um, well, I think it's both, isn't it? Because it's, it, it helps us put over the ideas. Yes, yes. But, but, yeah. but we've all come from a context where it's, as you say, it's, it, it's more limited than. Yeah, than we're where, used to some yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, When you keep bifurcating, uh, that's what happens, isn't it? Yes. You know, keep doing that. Yeah. Um, one thing that might be interesting. Um, Today we've you used a number of terms. We talk about information and various other places have come up. We don't even know what information is. Um, and um, one of the first things that got us involved in what's led to the day was um, with um, uh, some people like Oxford, John Stein and um, Susan Greenfield, which are names I'm sure right now. Um, we try to do, try to ask a series of questions following some of the um, of what do we actually mean by all these various terms. And we published it in the New Scientist and we came up with 21 questions for the 21st century. And we could see if we had a marketing person involved. Um, and uh, the cognitive neuroscience had to answer. And it was a disaster because we don't know the answer. Yeah. One single one. Mm -hmm. We haven't even got definitions of what we're talking about. Well, well that's why I think the physics was useful. Yes. Because yes. it pulled in, well, it, uh, and it's been known for all time, but it's in some way associated with entropy. But entropy is a very, very difficult content, uh, concept to grasp. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it may be that there's some interesting stuff around at the moment about um, information potentially um, being rather like uh, energy wants to say made dynamics. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we'll end up with a whole series of theories of infodynamics perhaps. And if I'm very interested in it, if you do a reference to that. Um, someone seeing the example of an eye is merely for converting one sort of information to another sort of information. So the property of the second law is over here. That answers. So you, you come to so you come to that experiment to explain uh, how an eye might transmit uh, an electromagnetic signal into into, exactly. into, into another into, into another no, a signal in another medium. Yes, that's right. Anyway, line yeah, line. Yeah. Taking up too much time. No, I'm taking up too much time. I, think <laughs> I want to remove myself from this stage. I think you've heard enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> There's well, no one to answer the question. <laughs> oh, there are more <laughs> questions. <laughs> there are more questions, I'll answer more questions. But I'd like to give the stage to someone else for a bit. Well, shall I show a few pictures? Shall I show a few pictures? Have you, did you want to give another presentation? Uh, no, no, well, I just look if I show some pictures we could discuss. Yes, okay. Peter, yeah. before you begin, can I tell a short story which uh, is at your expense? Of course. <laughs> I, I, don't go away, it's very short. I, I live uh, in Geneva and near Geneva is CERN, as probably everybody knows. And I was working for digital equipment, a computer company, and I had a responsibility for a small group based on the campus at CERN. And I got to know the, uh, the IT manager of CERN, a guy called David Williams. And one day he said to me, Michael, you ask really, really bizarre questions. I've only heard these questions once before, and that's from the guy who used to run the CDC 6000 
but his name is Peter Marsa. <laughs> so I contacted him, he was living in Bristol at the time, and after that I joined an organisation called ANPA, which he's a member, Peter Brown is a member, and uh, Vanessa would have been a member, and this has been going on for some time. So you and I ask him the most bizarre questions is why we got together. Well, well I, I think that, that was the advantage of why I always went to this AMPA organisation. It can be to people who perpetually thought outside the box. It's the simplest way of putting it. I think also, uh, uh, Mike, what, we, what I always noticed when we used to go along, and there were people from all sorts of disciplines used to tell them, some, sometimes you never met them. Uh, you, you never met them before, but each time, each time everybody gave their papers at this meeting, you used to think, oh gosh, you know, he's thinking on exactly the same lines I am, but he's coming from a, he's coming from a totally different angle. So this was this this thing of uh, what uh, uh, Charles was talking about convergence it was always happening at these meetings. You go along. You go along, uh, uh, and no, people wouldn't necessarily take any notice of your ideas, but you but you talk to them, and they'd say, "Well, yes, 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 we are. You know, we're all seem to be thinking on similar lines this year." And but it happened every year, or, or most years, didn't it? They, 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 they said, it was uh, it, it, it was really it was really quite, it was really quite fascinating. We're terribly short of the language to discuss all of these things. Yes. Yeah, yes, that's the difficulty with today, but uh, Peter's coming from physics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it might be interesting to ask people if they'd like to suggest what they think the word consciousness means. Is there anybody care to suggest what do you think consciousness is? Anybody? I can, well, make, I can make a suggestion. <laughs> I'd be curious what is unconscious. So what is the alternative to conscious? Like is a plant aware that it's growing? What if once you have a look at what the absence or opposite of that state is, you might be able to define it better. That's a very good point. How would you relate it to being wake and sleep? Wake and sleep are kind of like different levels. I wouldn't say that uh, they were the same as life and death, which are very different. Also, you have consciousness, and um, you can split that into subconscious and conscious, uh, where the conscious itself is one element that drives you in the reality of this world, and the subconscious is one that is protecting you from different elements or traumas, etc. etc. Now, we use that in hypnotherapy uh, simply to separate the consciousness. Uh, to allow the, the person to talk to the subconscious to bring the polarities of the two together to resolve the problem. So there is this separateness within the consciousness. Well, I think mean, it's a very complicated subject because. Uh, 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 yeah. Anyone I mean, offer, offer a, uh, offer a definition of consciousness? I can make a sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's, a, there's an organization uh, based uh, in London called the Scientific and Medical Network. It was established about 40 years ago, and they've been studying consciousness ever since. They have lots and lots of meetings, some great annual meetings, and lots of local yeah. parts. Join them, and they'll, they'll tell you about 15 different versions of consciousness at any given meeting. <laughs> Well, but I, I think this, uh, this, 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 this theory about your being connected to the rest of the universe uh, strikes the right note for me uh, about what consciousness might, might be about. And the fact that we are unique as individuals means that we would experience that consciousness differently for all of us. We would know what it was, but we wouldn't really be able to explain it to anybody. Because for each of us, it's, it's, going, it's going to be uniquely, it's going to be uniquely different. Yes, it is. Uh, because you, you never know, you never entirely know uh, someone, somebody, even if you've uh, 
time, after all, I, I've been married to my wife now for 57, 57 years, and I'm sure there are a lot of things that I don't know about. <laughs> uh, and and that's good so I can confirm every day, and she's always telling me the same thing about me. <laughs> so, uh, you see, one of the things that, one of the things that's very interesting is, of course, when you when we all dream. Hmm? And we all dream because we're asleep. So we could therefore be argued to be unconscious. So we're consciously dreaming at the same time. Yes, you can put that. You still have your identity when you're dreaming. You're not usually dreaming that you're something or someone else. So yeah, yeah, you're true. Generally, in dreaming, you can't move. Many of us have experienced non consciousness uh, because. You may have had an operation, and you, an anaesthetic, and you wake up immediately after you've had it in a completely different place, surrounded by different people to what you're talking to. And so that period in between must have been non-consciousness. And so we kind of know what that's like. It's like a complete void, isn't it? It's a very peculiar sensation to do that. To suddenly wake up totally different. Yeah. But the, the, the human uh, brain lines are so, so, so incredible. Uh, th there was a, a, uh, 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 something I read uh, about, about two months ago about some, uh, some lady who suffered from uh, uh, epileptic fits with such frequency that they thought the only way they could get rid of it was to uh, uh, cut her frontal Get, get a, a two hemispheres separate separate them from one another, and that they did. And then apparently, about uh, three years later, they discovered that the brain had started rewiring them together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's uh, uh, so they did a lot of those experiments in Canada. Yeah, yes, you know, yes, right, 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 right at the very beginning. Yes, but uh, somebody came. Yeah, yes, yes. It produced all sorts of curious sites. Yes, yes, curious yes. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think, think I'm Oliver Sachs, that's what I'm saying. Speaking of Rosie, yeah. He's written that. Yeah. He missed uh, that famous example of uh, mistaking yeah. one's wife for a hat stand. I was wondering, Peter, from your earlier remark, whether that's ever been a problem. No, 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 I don't think so. It's just a bit Is the idea we're trying to fill out the time through five o'clock? Uh, well, well, no. I, I mean, uh, I, 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 I was going to talk some more. I was going to talk some more, but I, I think, I, I think that would make things perhaps. Uh, uh, I, I get the feeling that some of this is a, a bit indigestible, anyway, because we're all such from from such uh, uh, different different uh, different different backgrounds. People, but, there's a gentleman in the back row of this case, thank you. Yeah, I was going to add, um, by building on what uh, Peter said earlier, now he made the other Peter Charles did uh, make a point of uh, uh, how does the brain learn? How does the brain learn? In terms of uh, learning as a process, how does the brain learn? And I was sitting here reflecting on the fact that how do we know that we arrive at the point of learning. So relating this to the concept of consciousness, I'm saying it's a state rather than a physical mm -hmm. uh, accomplishment or uh, a point. And therefore, our shared consciousness to a state of enlightenment. Yes. Yeah, so I'll stop. Well, well I, I certainly agree. It's I mean, it certainly appears <laughs> that uh, there are other peoples in the world uh, like the uh, Tibetan uh, monks who've studied this in, in great detail and come to conclusions from their own their own experience. Uh, I know what what wants me wants you that the uh, uh, the uh, Dalai Lama uh, and he uh, we asked him what what your questions like that and his uh, his view was rather opaque because he, he clearly knew a lot about it. But again, it was very difficult for him to convey. To convey.
come play it to us. Uh, and also I once went to uh, and gave the Lionel Blue Lecture at the uh, at, at, at Durham. At Durham when they were interested in consciousness. And uh, I think that, uh, do you know, I don't know if you know Lionel Blue used to come on the BBC and give, uh, he's a rabbi, uh, and uh, uh, give, 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 give sort of um, uh, help, help people with uh, help people with problems. But he was very interested in, uh, in in consciousness. But as you say, everybody seems to have a different uh, a, a different. It's very very difficult to to. Uh, but but in the, the theory we we been talking about is this. There's this uh, process which is, seems to be very fundamental of phase conjugate adaptive resonance. Okay, so so there's a lot of when the, when the, when uh, 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 when when the brain is working occasionally occasionally something jumps into your mind. Perhaps you weren't even even necessarily thinking about it that about that thing at the time. Uh, uh, and it's like, uh, or, or you see something, and it. Uh, uh, and then there's the example of somebody who was, uh, was uh, I was going past a, a farm, a farm with a friend, uh, and uh, he suddenly started talking about uh, uh, times from his boyhood for apparently no reason, uh, and they tracked it down, and apparently uh, when he when he was brought up. Uh, he was brought up on a pig farm, and there was the faint odour of the of the pigs coming over the road, and without him really being aware of it, they changed his mind to bring him back to his to to memories of his uh, of his boyhood. And that, was, that was the only explanation. There's one thing I might add to that that's an interesting. Um, there's a theory, isn't there, that actually everything that happens to us that we do actually remember it. And um, the real time club did a research, must be two, like two years ago at the Royal Institution, um, where we actually demonstrated that every single image that hits our eyeballs, we have a record of it. Uh, series of these that have been done in various places that have gone on to show that that image is still there years later, maybe decades later. The curious fact is that we don't always know that it's there. Um, and it's a very simple demonstration. And most of the people that came to watch this were very skeptical. No, 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 no. And it's one of those demonstrations that um, each individual person is doing it themselves. And at the end, they were saying, well, it's true. Yeah. Um, uh, so there's quite a lot of evidence um, that we have remembered everything. And whether we access it is a different. That changes. And then we, uh, it was a demonstration that upset quite a lot of people in the audience in the Well, that, 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 have a message come up in their head saying memory full. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus don't do that anymore, but they used to. A face bag full of memory full. Now, well, uh, uh, well I think these days a lot of you could do the message so it's information overload. <laughs> 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 Access denied. Um, <laughs> think about it for a moment, especially if I'm delighted to see some of the people the other people here. Uh, your grandparents, um, the amount of information for you 
be what, 10 times as much, 100 times as much? Uh, uh, what we learned in the, uh, in the last second of years. Um, now, we all pack it in. Um, that doesn't seem to be an accident. Now, that's a very interesting system that can seem apparently um, have a, a completely infinite capacity. And I think if we thought about that more, it would help us. And I think it's that point you're making, isn't it, Peter? The job uh, that uh, the, the internet of learners is growing and growing and growing, but it's only growing because we've just multiplied the, the stuff. Um, we haven't been able to do that quite as great. But do say a little bit more about your thoughts on the holographic aspects of this, because that's very interesting. Because that would account for the fact we can almost infinitely expand our. Well, well I think there are, there, are, there are one or two people who are there are pretty difficult yeah, because they do have. Uh, uh, they, 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 they effectively can go back, you know, they can actually remember things in great detail. Well, you can, you can go on as a disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and they, uh, so, so it would appear that to some extent, uh, to remain safe, the brain probably put some, so the, some, something puts a block on what we can remember because a lot of it's not much use anyway. No, but I, 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 I've, uh, if you, you, can get, you can get very strange things, things happen to you. Uh, no, I, I mean, when I first started uh, thinking about these ideas back in the early 80s, I was driving along in my car, going down to Bristol University to work, uh, uh, when, uh, uh, you, you know, Stroke, but uh, I don't think it was. It was just uh, uh, you, you saw. Uh, it's almost as if you saw for a very short while a different reality. Uh, and I put that down to the fact that uh, about that time that I, I was actually mulling over things, and you push them down into your unconscious, or they go down into your conscious. But occasionally. Uh, something something stirs them up and they come up. And sometimes they're fantastically good uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, uh, you know, uh, uh, going, back, going back to heaven, you, you know, uh, I get told, well, why did you get up in the middle of the night and, and write in your notebook? Because you know? <laughs> I, I, sometimes, I think of a phrase that I, well, I'd like to have that in paper, and I know from past experience that if I don't write it down, I, 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 can't, I can't find it. I don't seem to be able to find it again. Isn't it usually gibberish? No, 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 I would perhaps be composing a scientific paper with you, with you, Peter. I think, oh, that's a phrase I want to put in. I mean, some of them are not like that. I've never found anything waking up in the middle of the night with the slightest use. I suppose we're all different. I'm curious, I'm sorry I was a little bit late at the beginning, so I'm having this class of other purpose stuff. But I'm kind of curious, is the purpose ultimately improving and augmenting what we already have as intellectual capacity, or is it maybe building a better system than what we have? Uh, Why? Well, building a better system than what we have. And also understanding. Well, it's the understanding. I mean, I think that if we really understood how our brains and minds and bodies uh, worked, or had a much better idea about it, then maybe we can do all sorts of because, it, 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 I mean, if, if, if for example, uh, you put on a, uh, a, a heart monitor onto your, yourself, okay, then uh, it's, well, it's well known that you could, if, 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 if you could look at it uh, and you can, you, you can uh, consciously 
change if, if you practice. You can consciously change, change, change things for your mind. No, but I, 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 I really think that, uh, I, I, really, I, I really think that uh, we, we might be able to, uh, rather than going in a hospital and have some doctor give us some drug, which always has terrible side effects. I, mean, I don't know if you ever open your packets of medicines and you read the little things, well, when you get old, I'm sure you will. Uh, and, and, and you think, my God, you know, why am I taking this? You know, it says don't do that. And, this, if you notice this, it's terrible. Uh, uh, but, but Especially when you reckon the old doctor hasn't the faintest idea either. Well, well sometimes they don't. You get rather Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Peter, I, I think you are really, really underestimating what I would like today call your quest. Peter Owens, Peter Master, Vanessa Hill, and others, right? This is a true massive scientific quest to understand how nature works and your example of your experience as a human being is something we've oh, got a we're talking about consciousness no no we rest left that 15 topics oh, ago <laughs> So do you agree? It's a question. No, I agree. Yeah. True no, it's question. a much bigger question. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. a much bigger question. Now no, wait, wait, no, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. And there are at least three examples of measured stuff, yeah. like particle physics and you know, mechanical stuff and so on. And this is a true proof. You need three examples, it's often said, you know, to prove it works. So other than the details and wrapping and yeah. putting out the trainer trainer manual, you've done. Now, what are we going to do with it? I think that was, in a sense, yeah, the yeah. spirit of the, of the question. I think, from my question about you know, mental tools as opposed to muscle tools, yeah, we're going to move on, right? I think you guys have done a fantastic job. Well, and um, it's not just improving the bloody heart. Oh, no, 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 I, 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 I'm convinced, but the question is, can I convince any of you that, uh, what Peter has discovered with yes. this rewrite yes. system is is that we uh, we have the kind of uh, thing that uh, Stephen Hawking is looking for the theory the, the theory of everything because we've covered uh, we're, we're covering we're covering an awful lot of ground I mean if we can explain quantum physics and then we can explain chemistry and chemical valence and then we can uh, go up and uh, explain the genetic code and uh, we can then go forward forward from that and explain how the uh, how according to these read write principles the brain the, the brain the brain might the brain might work then uh, we're on with that but we a one of the problem is can we convince enough people to accept that and is it true? Uh, uh, because if uh, if somebody could come along with a, uh, a concrete phenomena that can't be explained, right, then uh, well, we're we, to some extent we're back at uh, stage one. Uh, I mean, it was a it was a wonderful it was a wonderful journey and very exciting, and uh, uh, it's kept it, it's kept me young for the last twenty years. Uh, uh, and making notes in the middle of the night. Hmm? And making notes in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. no it, it's, 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 it's really wonderful. And I, I'm extremely privileged to, I mean, some of the young people here today are having a lot uh, tougher life than, uh, uh, than I than I ever had. We were born at a, a time when, you, you know, if you went out and you got yourself, you worked hard and you got yourself a good academic degree, uh, then you know you knew you had a, 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 almost a job for life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that don't happen. That don't happen very much. Anymore. And that's what. That's where. That's where the. Uh, that, that's where. That, that's the thing that will drive the human race, the, the human race forward. Uh, people, it will get more people. Because I, 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 I think, I think if it, you ask me now, what did I think the human brain was? Well, I think you know, Peter mentioned the 
and so forth. But it's probably not so much a, an information processing machine, but an oracle. It's, 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 it's there to make decisions. To make decisions and, if necessary, make them on incomplete information because if it doesn't, it won't survive. The individual won't survive. And, uh, and so it's oriented, oriented to, to being a, a sort of decision, a, a decision function mechanism of a great, great power. And if we could combine that, as you say, with uh, digital computation, which has all these, what could have all these wonderful apps and aid us in all sorts of ways, then the two will complement each other per uh, uh, per perfectly. And, uh, 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 and I also think that nature doesn't play doesn't play zero sum games. She plays uh, non zero. I think there's there's another aspect that you didn't mention, which I think is also part of the brain, which is that it's the one that's really coordinating all the rest of the functions of the body. Oh yes, so absolutely. it's not. But I think it's underplayed because I don't think. No, no, well, that's what I say. I, I, I think, I, I think uh, if this theory is right, it, it could change the whole of medical science. Uh, because you could learn, you could learn, instead of taking these pills with their side effects, that really, uh, uh, you think, uh, I, I mean, my wife's a bit like that. She, she, she can't do it anymore now. But uh, she used to be able to go to the dentist and he, she didn't like injections. And she didn't let him give her her injections. And, and, and he did all her, he did all her to work. Uh, uh, and she said, well, well I can, uh, you know, uh, I don't like it, but I can, I, I can, I can pull down the pain to a level that's bear, bearable and do that. Yeah. Oh, this one else? Oh. No, just the one you were to the way. Okay. Um, is there a way to implement these create and convert algorithms in like already existing programming language, like C++ or Java or Python? Because I've been thinking about that and I need help. Well, I'll just say, uh, my, my, my question is, I don't know the answer, uh, and if, if you've got some ideas, oh, I think go, 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 go for it. The, the, the raised one, well, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there is. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and so my question was, uh, we were talking about the fact that a lot of this purpose can actually improve the human condition as opposed to replace it. I'm wondering if you understood it perfectly, theoretically, could you implant that consciousness and that thinking in something that was mechanical and would never die? <laughs> uh, well, a very well, good question. Well, I, you see, I, I, I don't really think that... Uh, 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 the technology can every, ever really replicate this because there are something like uh, what, 10 to the 18th neurons. There must be they, there must be another 10 to the 30th of uh, uh, geo cells, and throughout the body there must be a, a vast uh, network because the microtubules up here as well. All the place now, that, you know, well maybe you could grow that technology in, in, in the laboratory, but uh, gosh, gosh, we, we, we've already, uh, can, can you do it in, can you do it in nine months uh, uh, and have such fun doing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is going to uh, help grow all the uh, um, um, one thing that actually interesting is that you bring up because it has been mentioned today, and that is um, it might have a lot to do with consciousness. Um, if you think about it, uh, there's one thing human beings have in, in your potential perfect robot, uh, and that is sensations. Um, and uh, uh, all the Feelings that we have about everything, emotion, emotion uh, and the rest of it. Um, and we 
tend to put that on one side a bit. But at the very simple level, uh, our distant ancestors felt anger, uh, hunger, thirst, I don't know whether many more, arousal, I don't um, Now, we've come up with a massive range of, of emotions, and uh, I'm inclined to think that they played a very major role in our sensation of consciousness. Uh, now, you have to build those also into... If you were to mimic this one. Yeah, yes. you, because um, at the moment, I'm, I think it's quite fun to talk about robots and things like that, and artificial intelligence, because finance did lots of research on it, but um, that's why intelligence is a very small part yeah. of the human condition. The clever bit is, is to be able to think. Now, nobody's got around to that yet. Um, I don't think I'm too worried about robots um, that are not intelligent. Um, but it, it'll be quite fun to build them um, and see what they can do to help. I mean, if I could depend upon a robot to do 90% of the things I do, I think I think I've got a good idea. Um, I think if the robot did 90% of what I could do and I could transplant memories in the same way that you said they were encoded, and memories are a lot of what makes you who you are, not just your emotions. And if that can be put into a silicon vessel or whatever it was, yeah. I think it'd be awesome. You'd never done that. I'd change your way. It wouldn't be a matter of putting them in. Rather like we slide a new whatever into a computer with a whole kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if a human being or a robot or whatever, is going to acquire, upload, or by the way, a, a lot more information. If we're anywhere near right at that kind of framework, it would have to grow it step by step by step. Because I suggest that for all of us, what we perceive in our brain about everything is different from every one of us. Yeah. And, um, and grows and changes as and you learn. Grows and changes yes. you and in our environment and everything else. And what happens to Peter if he puts the light on to make his notes in the middle of the night, etc., etc., etc. So every single one of us is different. Um, therefore, you can't actually upload standard data yeah, into what are time. totally separate individual. Uh, my brother said that it If you wanted to do some of these things, the kind of things you might have to replicate what goes on in, uh, uh, in, the, in each human's synapse when the neuron fires. Okay? Now, uh, that's, that, that, that's, uh, that, that, that's, that's what uh, Sir John Eccles discovered uh, when he was winning his. Uh, Nobel Prize for work on the physiology of the brain back in the uh, 60s. Uh, now he, he discovered that when the neuron fired, the uh, signal went down the axon of the neuron and it went into the synaptic bulb. Uh, and uh, in the synaptic bulb is, is a hexagonal vesticular grid. That's before it gets to the, to the synapse. And inside each of the, the, the holes in this semicolor grid are, are uh, vesicles, okay? And inside the vesicles are 10,000 units of different kinds of neurotransmitters, okay? And when the neuron fires, exactly, on the whole, exactly one of these vesicles arrives, is, is released from the vesicular grid goes to the synapse uh, and the the transmitter <coughs> molecules go across the, the synaptic gap to provide the uh, sense the amplification of the signal for the next for the next stage. Now I mean that's just that's just my mind. That's just that's just that's just incredible. I mean that's that's all the that's that, that that's not the result of uh, 
uh, a random, that's not the result of random evolution, that's, that's evolution uh, saying, but we've been going, for, you know, that's, that's the end product, that's the end product, that's the, the best, that's probably the best that can be done. Yeah, yeah. The, the very, the very, 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 very best can be done. And, and, and we've got, we've got 10 to the 18th of those. God, it's, it, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like all these people saying, we want to go to Mars. I mean, nuts. <laughs> I mean, the work, the, 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 this planet is just so, so incredible and so beautiful and so, so 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 magnificent. Why, why would we? Why would we? Surely we can go around the hands and I, I don't know who gives a guy. I don't shake hands and say, look, can't we? Can't we? Can't we settle this issue because we want to keep on living here because it's just uh, it, 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 it's well, it may be in this world, it's out of this world. As far as I'm concerned, it's just it's just fantastic. There's a very interesting thing to. If you think about that in an incredibly sophisticated way for neurons to be living together. Now, very little in nature happens by accident. There's always a reason that we evolved that way as opposed to whatever. Um, and, um, it's very interesting if you explore, and um, these are described there, the synapse as a gap. Now, why a gap? What makes the gap that wide? Why that way? Is the gap fixed, or is it variable? Because if it's variable, Therefore, if you like, the tension across the synapses are variable. Then maybe that answers the question we were talking about earlier about consciousness, and we go to sleep. Because if the gaps move the part, signals still go across, but much more steady. Maybe. Yeah, so. But um, very little research. I'm aware of what is going on. Well, actually, that, the question you just asked was uh, was answered even earlier than that. It was by this, uh, this guy in the last previous century, Raymond E. Oh, yes, I, yes, sure. Yeah, 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 he more or less well, he, he, he more or less worked out that the that the the neurons were uh, in a sense acting almost independent. In, almost independently yes. of one another. 